so that turns the audio on. And I'll pull it back down. Welcome back here to Nacogdoches as we're here for the second of two and the doubleheader on this Saturday afternoon in Nacogdoches. At JC's Field here, the Lumberjacks took game one, five to four, off of sixth inning heroics from the Lumberjacks. On the mound for this second game of the afternoon and the third game of the series, Jacob Stobart, the left-hander, senior with a 2.76 ERA. We'll see Kasten Furr here for the first batter of the Privateers this afternoon as Furr swings and misses for strike one. The freshman shortstop batting 315 here early in this Southland season. Sends that one up the middle and over the shortstop for base hit. Take a big round around the first base, but center fielder Kyle Cullen able to get it in and Keep Fur at the first bag. Now batting for the Privateers, Gage Howard, as the home plate umpire calls time. Howard batting 313 this season. A senior making his 68th plate appearance. See his first pitch from Stobart. As that one misses the zone for ball one. Fur. With a normal leadoff at first. Not dancing, trying to get Stobart's attention as that one's fouled off. The left fielder for the Privateers has 21 hits, three doubles, one triple, and one home run with 13 RBIs to his name so far. The Privateers took game one of this series last night, winning 6-4 as that one's sent towards left center field and is collected for the first out of the inning. Right fielder Pierce Howard now to the plate. Howard to junior. The Privateers standing on the right side of home plate. Swinging left. As that one's in the dirt for ball one. Howard, the junior out of Silver Spring, Maryland. Has a 
teammate on first base and would like to move him another 90 feet into scoring position here. As he swings underneath that one for strike two. The count now one and one for the right fielder. As Stobart sends that over to first to check on Fur. The Lumberjacks wearing their Saturday blacks. As Fur's on the move, and that one's chopped foul. The count now one and two. One two pitch. Swung on and hit towards second, and that one will find the gap. First stands on second and will stay there as the Lumberjacks do a good job of getting that one back in. Right fielder Cade Clemens makes sure that Fur can't round second and take third. The privateers do have two runners on the base paths now. First standing on second. And Pierce Howard standing on first after that single. Silo Isa, now to the plate. Isa's been a productive bat for the Privateers this weekend so far. Has sent a couple down third base line and down deep into the corner for multiple extra base hits. Also bringing in a couple RBIs for his team. He watches ball one in the dirt from Stobart. The second baseman will look to advance his teammates around the base paths as that one's out of the zone. Adrian Menares is catching for the Lumberjacks in this third game. Going out to talk to Stobart. Make sure he and his catcher or he and his pitcher rather are on the same page. The 2-0 pitch. Swing and a miss for Isa. Strike one. The Lumberjacks not the only team in action here today. Two more teams played here in Nacogdoches as the Lady Jack Volleyball and Lady Jack Softball teams played earlier today during really at the same time as the Lumberjacks took the field in their first game. Lady Jack volleyball team one in three straight sets against Northwestern State. And the Lady Jack softball team came from behind in the bottom of the sixth inning, putting six runs on Nichols State to win that one nine to four. The softball Lady Jacks remain perfect in conference play. And Lady Jack volleyball team continues to stay towards the top of the league in the Southland volleyball standings as well as Stobart loads the bases as he walks Salo Isa. The designated hitter for the privateers now to the plate, K.C. Simonich.
force out at any bag at this point. As Stobar with a good pitch to get ahead of the batter here. Stobart has some work to do here in the first inning. That one sent down the first baseline fair as it'll go into the corner. Cade Clemens tries to collect, and the Privateers will send three home as New Orleans takes the lead here early in Nacogdoches with that three RBI double from their designated hitter, Casey Simonich. Isaac Williams now to the plate here in the first inning with a runner on second. The count, three and one. As he sends that one high and in foul territory. Monaros will chase it, but it'll land safely behind the UNO dugout. The count now full for the center fielder for the Privateers. The freshman hitting 220 in the season so far. The 3 2 pitch into the feet of Williams, and that'll put another runner on the base pass here for the Privateers. The Lumberjacks going to meet with Stobart on the mound here. There are arms warming up in the Lumberjack bullpen down the left field line. Stobart getting and talking to from his coach. I guess coach probably just telling him, look, we got to settle down here. We're in the first inning of play. Let's just find our spots, and we don't have to blow the numbers off the gun, but what we need to do is start getting some of these UNO batters out. We'll see if the senior left-handed pitcher can take some advice from his coach and readjust here. As there's two runners on the base paths and one out on the board. That one misses the zone. Hudson Laborde at the plate. Swings at that one and... Cannot connect for the first strike of the at-bat. 
the first baseman for the Privateers out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Redshirt Jr. Sitting 500 so far this season. And only two games played. He's only started one as well. He has one RBI to his name so far. He has a chance for another here as he has a runner in scoring position. The 2 1 pitch from Stobart. Fouled off onto the Little League field by Laborde. That one misses. And the count now, three and two. Stobart with a three-two pitch. Find the bat of Laborde. The Lumberjacks able to make the play and keep the runners at their bases as... Brian Burgos able to get underneath that one for the second out of the inning. Catcher Jorge Tejeda coming to the plate. Tejeda the sophomore, batting 147 so far in the season. Has a chance to bump that number up here a little bit as Jacob Stobart has struggled early on the mound. Able to pitch into a pop out here. The last at bat and gets to hated to swing on that one. Stobart, Stobart may be finding his groove here after a quick talking to from his coach. The uh, one pitch swung on and popped up high as that heads towards the gap between first and second. That one lost in the sun as two privateers will come across. That one not in in time as that error will cost the Lumberjacks two runs. Cheney Dodge just not able to get underneath it as there's no clouds in the sky to, to block the sun. Tejeda will find himself on first base, and the Lumberjacks down another two here in the top of the first. Blake waiting out of the plate. Takes first pitch strike. That one fouled off. The count now 0 and 2 for Way. Way batting 231 here in the season. The third baseman for the Privateers. His first time to see Stobart before the lineup card flips over. That one out of the zone for ball one. Stobart worked to get out of the inning and pitched a pretty good pop-up. Cheney Dodge just not able to collect as that one swung on and missed. As Menares will send it down to first base for the out. The Lumberjacks will leave the inning giving up five runs, but have a full game to try to make up for it. We'll be back with more Lumberjack baseball after this.
Coming to the plate now for the Lumberjacks. Right fielder Cameron Crawford. Crawford and the Lumberjacks have some work to do as the Islanders put up five in the top of the first. Crawford will see his first pitches from Brandon Mitchell, the left-hander. The sophomore with an ERA of 6.60 here in the season so far. His first pitch is in the dirt, and that one finds the leg of the referee. Umpire walks that one off. That one misses the zone for ball two. Crawford actually playing center field for the Lumberjacks this afternoon as Kyle Cullen gets a break. Mitchell, yet to find the zone. As that one's into the knees, the Lumberjacks are happy to take a free base here as They'll need some offense. Cheney Dodge coming to the plate for the Lumberjacks. Dodge with the costly error in the top of the first. Not able to find the ball in the sun, which would have ended the inning. Let two more privateers come around the base paths and score, extending their lead to five. Crawford has speed on has speed on first. See if Mitchell goes and checks on him. As that one's poured in for a first pitch strike. First strike of the afternoon for Mitchell. Dodge watches that one for second strike. Quickly down in the count, 0-2. As he'll step out of the box and reset. Mitchell has pitched in four games. He started four. Has not been credited with a win or a loss so far. As that one's in at the knees of Cheney. Brandon Mitchell has pitched 15 innings, given up 21 hits, and has 11 earned runs to his name as Crawford takes off towards second. That's a strikeout for Cheney Dodge. Skyler Black, who had a couple RBIs to his name last night and a couple more in the first game today. Splits his time between the designated hitter role and catcher role, and for this game at least, he starts out in the DH spot. Has a runner in scoring position. Black's accustomed to at least hitting singles. He has the power to hit it out of here. See if he can spark the offense for the Lumberjacks here in the bottom of the first. DL1 for Mitchell. Finds the dirt as Crawford rounds third. The Lumberjacks advance their runner another 90 feet here as Cam Crawford. Finds himself just 90 feet away from the first run of the afternoon for the Lumberjacks, at least in this second game. The 1-2 to Black. Well out of the zone. Even the count at two apiece. More power follows Scholar Black as Jordan Monesey is 
in the on deck circle. The 2 2 for Mitchell. Swing and a miss, strike three for Black. Not able to bring Crawford home the last 90 feet as that task will be next up to Jordan Monesey. The first baseman for the Lumberjacks. A key part of the offense that lifted the Lumberjacks over Oklahoma early in the season. And that one misses for ball one. Monesey going to have to find grass here to get Crawford across the plate as that one finds the top corner for strike one. Mitchell with the 1-1 one, one delivery. That one in at the knees of Monesey for ball two. The 2-1 pitch. High and out of the zone for ball three. Monesey hitting 267 so far in the season. With Cade Clemens in the on-deck circle. The privateers may look at putting Monesey on first as that one's fouled over the Lumberjack dugout. And the count now full for the senior first baseman. Kay Clemens hitting just 217 so far this year. Has a little less power. It's not the worst thing in the world if the privateers walk Monesey here. As that one just misses the zone. As the Lumberjacks now have their second base runner of this inning due to a walk. Right fielder Cade Clemens. Getting his first crack at Brandon Mitchell. As I said, Clemens batting 217 so far this season. Has five hits on 23 at bats. As he chops that down the third baseline, and that one will roll foul. Clemens will come back to home to. Take his second attempt here. That one just rolled foul and maybe for the best. Third baseman Blake Way was keyed into that and maybe been able to get Clemens out at first. The uh, one pitch inside for ball one. Mitchell with the 1-1 delivery. Swung on and fouled towards the back. Count now 1-2 and two for Clemens. Two outs on the board here. Clemens going to have to find grass if he wants to bring Lumberjack across the plate. As swing and a miss, strike three is... Mitchell able to get three swinging strikeouts here in the bottom of the first. The Lumberjacks leave two on board as the score is 5 0 New Orleans going into the top of the second. We'll be back with more Lumberjack baseball after this.
Welcome back here to the top of the second as the Privateer slip over the lineup card in as many innings. All nine batted here in the top of the first. As Stobart out for his second inning of work gets a first pitch strike on Caston Fur. Fur singled his first at bat and came around. As that one misses for ball one. The one one pitch. Out of the zone for ball two. That one out of the zone for ball three. Let's count now three and one. Stobart with the delivery. That one fouled off by Fur. The count now full three and two here. As Stobart looked to battle back. That one out of the zone for ball four. Caston Fur finds himself on first base for the second time in as many innings. As Gage Howard now coming to the plate for Privateers. Howard fouls that one back just to the left of the press box for strike one. Howard the first out in the first inning. Flew out to left field. As Fur will try to take second. And Menares gets the ball there in time. Beautiful throw by Menares from his spotted catcher. As the bases now clear for the Lumberjacks. And two strikes on the board. That one swung and hit well towards left center field. Gage Howard responds with a double. As Lumberjack center fielder Cam Crawford made a really good attempt at the ball, just not able to get there. Left fielder Cal Martin able to bring it in. Pierce Morgan now to the plate. That one just below the zone for ball one. One out on the board for the Lumber Lumberjacks. Stobart just checking on Howard at second. As that one misses the zone for ball two. To a pitch from Stobart. Hit high towards left center as Crawford gets underneath it. He'll throw it in to Burgos, who's able to hold the runner at second. Crawford showing his arm strength there. Fulmer Jacks now two outs down here in the bottom of the second. Top of the second. Satellite and out of the plate. Out 
Isa holds back on that one. Takes ball one. Isa walked his last at bat. Stobart out of the zone again for ball two. The 2-0 pitch from Stobart. Swung on and hit by Isa. Sent towards right center field. And Lumberjack right fielder. Cade Clemens able to collect. And in the inning for the Lumberjacks. The Pir Privateers strand one on the base pads. And don't bring you more across the plate. As the score is still 5-0 here in Nacogdoches. The Lumberjacks will be back to the plate here after this. Left fielder Cal Martin now coming to the plate for the Lumberjacks. Martin batting 250 early in this season. He's made eight appearances, started three games. So, a relatively small sample size for the freshman. As that one misses the zone for ball one. Martin facing left-hander Brandon Mitchell as that one's sent towards short and a great play by second baseman Silo Isa able to get up and make the catch before it goes over to his head if that ball had gotten in the gap it could have been extra bases for Martin instead he's heading back to the dugout as the privateers quickly record the first out of the bottom of the second Ryan Burgo snapped the plate for the Lumberjacks. He's made a couple good defensive plays here early as he swings in front of that one. The count one on one to the Lumberjack shortstop. The sophomore's batting 250 here in this 2021 season. The Lumberjacks and the Privateers hopeful that we can get through this full season as their last one was cut short. Both teams just getting in to their first conference matchup last year as Burgos sends that back up the middle for a base hit. The Lumberjacks now with one on the base paths here in the bottom of the second. Adrian Menares coming to the plate for the Lumberjacks. Threw a runner out trying to steal in the top of the second. Now look to complement his defensive prowess with a good offensive appearance. As that one finds his own for strike one. The 
Mitchell with the 0-1 delivery. That one's sent through the gap between first and second. As Lumberjacks now have two aboard. As Menares gets his first hit of the afternoon. Sean Moore closing out the lineup for the Lumberjacks. Has a teammate in scoring position and one on first. The Lumberjacks need to find an answer to the five spot that the Privateers put on the board in the first inning. He has an opportunity to at least help his teammates move another 90 feet, if not bring them home here as the senior sees his first pitch from Mitchell. Lumberjack third baseman made an ESPN top 10-esque play last night as he was falling towards the Lumberjack dugout, able to get the ball over to first. More held back on that one. For the first ball of at bat and chops that one foul towards the lumberjack dugout with one out on the board if more sends it deep enough could at least let his two runners tag up and Advanced bases is that one. We'll find the second base bag, and the Privateers turn the double play to end the inning. Shortstop Caston Fur does it all as he gets the ball and tags second and throws the first for the third out. The Lumberjacks leave two on the base path as they will leave the inning with no runs. The score is still 5 nothing here early in this one, and we'll be back with more Lumberjack baseball after this. KC Simonich, out of the plate for the Privateers. Doubled his last at bat and brought three around. Started the scoring for the Privateers early in this game. Taking a second look at Stobart, who throws in a first pitch ball. As that one's chopped foul. Off of the privateer first base coach. Stobart. Ready with the 1-1 delivery. That one's shot back for strike two.
Simonich doing a good job of staying in this at bat. Fouling off the pitches that aren't quite good enough to land him on the base paths, but that one not able to foul it off out of the way of the catcher's glove as Menares brings that one in for the third strike. And the first out of the inning here for the Lumberjacks. Isaac Williams walked in his last plate appearance, came around and scored. It's part of the five-run first inning for the Privateers. Takes first pitch strike on the outside of the zone there. Stobart may have found his groove here in the last two innings as he's starting to blow through these Islander batters. Key to Stobart's success has been getting in front of the batters here on the count as that one out of the zone for ball one. The Islander center fielder saw a full count the last time he was at the plate. Now he's see twos across the board, two balls and two strikes. Stobart, ready for the 2-2 delivery. That one fouled off the bat of Williams. Williams able to stay alive here in this plate appearance. That one chopped back towards the pitcher. Brian Burgos, shortstop, not able to get to it. As Crawford sends it back in to keep Williams at first. The Lumberjacks giving up another hit here early in this one. Hudson Laborde now to the plate. Laborde popped out to short. His last at bat. That one in the dirt as Menar is not able to keep it in front as Williams takes second, standing up. Stobart bounced that one just in front of the batter, and Menar is not able to get the glove behind it. The Lumberjacks do have a glove warming up in the bullpen. As Lavord swings well behind that. One one from Stobart. Swung on and chopped towards second as Cheney Dodge not able to collect but recovers in time and sends it over to first for the second out of the inning. That could have been bad. As Dodge credited with an error in the first inning that gave the Islander the Privateers two more runs across the plate. That out does advance Williams to third. Jorge Tejeda to the plate now. Tejeda reached on an error with Dodge in the bottom of the top of the first, rather, as that one sent out to Crawford, who's able to collect for the third out, the Lumberjacks. Able to keep the Privateers scoreless here in the top of the third inning. We'll see what the Lumberjack bats react to here in the bottom of the third. We'll be back with more Lumberjack baseball after this.
Cameron Crawford. Now back to the plate for the Lumberjacks. Walked in the first inning as he leads off for the Lumberjacks. He made his way to third base, but not able to come home as that one misses the catcher's glove for ball one from Brandon Mitchell. He's off for his third inning of work here in Nacogdoches. That one high and out of the zone for ball two. Crawford was walked on four straight pitches in his first at bat as that one finds his zone. The first strike he's seen in this second game. That one chopped towards the Lumberjack dugout as... Crawford looks to ignite the Lumberjack offense here as that one comes off of his elbow. The umpire is saying he's not getting out of the way. And the man at home will call him out for the first out of the inning. The batter does have to make an attempt to get out of the way of the pitch if they're going to be hit by it. Home plate umpire there saying that Crawford didn't make enough of an attempt to get out of the way to earn that walk. Subsequently giving him that strike. Dodge out of the plate for the Lumberjacks. Takes the first pitch he sees as a strike. That one out of the zone. The count now even at one apiece here. Or the Lumberjack second baseman. Dodge struck out his first at bat. Uh, is that one in the zone for a strike two? You have to wonder. Dodge credited with an error in the first inning and almost got a second error to his name in the third. If that has any toll on him at the plate. Struck out looking this time as that will bring up Skylar Black. Mitchell's third strikeout of the evening. Skylar Black, the designated hitter today for the Lumberjacks. As that one finds his own for strike one. Mitchell with the 1-0. As that one misses the zone for ball one. Black connects with that, sends it out to center field for a single. The Lumberjacks now with one aboard and two outs here in the bottom of the third inning. Jordan Monesey now to the plate for the Lumberjacks. The first baseman looked to move around his designated hitter at first. We'll have to find grass if he wants to keep this inning alive as that one finds the inside part of the zone for strike one. Monacy watches that in the dirt for ball one. We've seen Skylar Black Steal before, so it's not unheard of. With two outs, you have to imagine he's not going to try to jeopardize Monacy's plate appearance. The count now one and two to the senior first baseman. The 
the one-two pitch for Mitchell. Finds a zone for strike three, Monacy. Can't quite believe it. The only opinion that matters is the umpires behind the plate as the Lumberjacks strand one and the Privateers in the third inning with a 5-0 lead. We'll be back with more Lumberjack baseball after this. Blake Way now making his way leisurely to the plate for his second plate appearance. The last privateer batter before we'll flip the lineup card over once again. Way struck out in his first at bat with his second chance to see Stobart here in the top of the fourth. So that one's fouled back for strike one. Stobart, we're going to head here with an early 0-2 count to Way. Swing and a miss, strike three. Stobart just needs three pitches to get Way out. That the second, third strikeout rather for Stobart this afternoon. Now back to the top of the lineup as Kasten Fur comes to the plate. Fur made a great defensive play a couple innings ago as was able to collect gr the ground ball and run over to first or run over to second rather make the tag and send it over to first to wrap up the double play. Takes the first pitch he sees is a ball. That one fouled back for strike one. First singled and walked in his first two plate appearances. Was thrown out trying to steal by Menares. As he sends that one into short left field. As he will round first and head back to the base for his second single of the evening. Privateers now with a runner on base and one out on the board. Gage Howard now coming to the plate. The senior left fielder for the Privateers. Flown out to left and doubled. In his first two plate appearances. We'll see if he can move Fur into scoring position here. As that one just low and out of the zone for ball one. That one finds the zone for strike one. Howard ready for the 1-1 one -one delivery. 
As that one's sent over to Monacy. Comes out of Stobart's hand. Just a little awkward and bounces right before the first baseman. Able to corral it as Fair heads back to first. The 1-1 one -one pitch by Monacy. In the dirt, Minara is able to collect. Not in time this time as Caston Fur finds himself aboard at second after stealing. Brian Burgos tried to deke Caston Fur at second as he ran in front of him, acting as if he didn't collect the ball, trying to get Fur to take off to third. Freshman shortstop not falling for that one. As Menares loses that one in the dirt again, we'll send it to third. Not in time as Fur is safe. After being thrown out in his first steal attempt, the freshman shortstop has made his way around the base paths on two consecutive steals here. As Menares, now they keep the ball in front of him. He's lost it twice now. As the count now, three and one to Gage Howard. Howard swings and chops that to first. As Monacy makes the smart play and gets the out at first. That brings Kasten Fur around to score. The Privateers now extend their lead. 6-0 to zero here in the top of the fourth inning. That pitch a strike here for Pierce Howard. Pierce Howard has singled and flown out to center in his first two plate appearances. Uh, so single again. Pierce Howard swings at the second pitch he sees and singles up the middle. So Eliza up to the plate. Another Islander, another privateer who's made a spectacular defensive play so far in this third game. Showing his hops earlier, able to snag one out of the air as he tries to lay down the bunt down the first baseline. That one bounces back foul. Stobart, ready for the 0-1 delivery. Since that one into the feet, as that one will bounce past Monacy as Menares slipped on the throw. Isa does his job to get out of the way of that. The count now 1-1 for the privateer second baseman. That one out of the zone for ball two. The count now two and one. Stobart not worried about the runner at first. Would like to just get the last out here at the plate. So that one just misses the zone for ball three. As it fouls that one off towards the privateer dugout. Landing in the grass. The count now full for Silo Isa. The 3 2 pitch. This is the zone for ball four as Pierce Howard was on his way to second either way. Aza 
walked for his second time this afternoon. Casey Simonich. Now to the plate. Doubled his first at bat. Brought in three runs. Struck out the second plate appearance. Has two runners on the base bags. We'll hit that one hard towards left center field. As Crawford calls off everybody else and gets underneath it for the third out of the inning. The Lumberjacks let one across and the Privateers will extend their lead to six here in Nacogdoches as we head to the bottom of the fourth after this. I think Cade Clemens now to the plate for the Lumberjacks. Clemens making his second plate appearance as he struck out in the first inning. Clemens will see sophomore Brandon Mitchell again here. As Mitchell with the 0-0 delivery misses the zone for ball one. Clemens fouls that one back for the first strike of the at-bat. Mitchell sends it down the pipe, and Clemens sends it to third as privateer third baseman. Blake Way able to keep that in front of him. As it bounces off his chest. It will send it over to first for the out. Clemens got power behind it, just not able to get it past Blake Way at third. Cal Martin out of the plate. Swings at the first pitch he sees and sends it up the middle. Second baseman, Salo Iza, able to make the backhand of play and send it to first. Isa with some defensive web gems here today as Cal Martin will head back to the base. Two batters down quickly here in the bottom of the fourth for the Lumberjacks. Brian Burgos to the plate. We'll take strike one. Burgos singled in his last at bat. Fouls that one off to the Little League field. As Burgos sends that short. Burgos finds himself aboard as the throw is off the bag. And... First baseman Hudson Laborde not able to get the tag to Burgos. Caston Fur not able to throw that accurately enough for Laborde to stay on the first base bag. Uh, 
Yes, Adrian Menares now to the plate. Menares takes a strike. Menares singled in his, his last at bat. Former Jackson, two outs on the board. You're going to have to find grass here. As that one low out of the zone for ball one. The 1-1 one -one pitch. A little low again for the second ball. Burgos still on first base as Menares takes strike two. Two is wild here as there's two balls, two strikes, and two outs. The Lumberjack catcher looking to keep the drive alive here as he fouls that one off for another plate opportunity. Burgos is on the move. Has to trot back to first. Mitchell ready for the 2 2 delivery. As the home plate umpire calls time. That one fouled sharply down the first baseline. Lands foul. That could have been six or so feet left. It could have been dangerous. Not only as it rolls into the corner, but both the first baseman and the first base umpire had to duck out of the way of that one. It was a hard line drive. Menard is with another opportunity to Mitchell pitch here. That one. Low for ball three. The count now full for the Lumberjack catcher. It's a good battle here between Mitchell and Menares. Menares able to foul a couple off and stay alive in the at-bat. As that one's sent towards right center field. That one finds the wall as... The Lumberjacks will get one run across as Burgos comes home standing up, and Menares gets a double in his second plate appearance. The Lumberjacks now get one run back as Menares gets an RBI double here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Brian Burgos reached the base pass on an error just a few moments ago. Now coming across the plate. I'm sure the privateers would have liked to have gotten that out. Ended the inning. Now Menara is making him pay for it. Is Sean Moore now making him pay for it was again as Menares heads home. The throw not in time. As the throw home was cut off by the privateer third baseman. The first base umpire says Sean Moore got to the bag in time. The privateer is not so sure about that, but the Lumberjacks get two back here quickly with two outs on the board. Sean Moore singling into left field. Cam Crawford now to the plate. The privateers will meet with Mitchell. He's had a pretty good game so far, minus the last two at-bats. The privateers should have been out of the inning with Brian Burgos at the plate. 
Not able to get him out at first. Has given the Lumberjacks an opportunity to get two runs across the plate. Cutting that six lead run down to four. Mitchell will stay in the game here. As he just wanted to meet with his coach and catcher Jorge Tejeda. Sean Moore on first base for the Lumberjacks. And Cam Crawford now at the plate. Swings at the first pitch he sees and sends that towards the Little League field. The Privateers do have some action in their bullpen down the first baseline. As that... Pitch will actually be a check down to the first base back. Make sure Sean Moore stays where he needs to. As Moore again sent back to the first base back. The L1 pitch. Well out of the zone for ball one. Crawford hits that down the right field line. And that one hits the foul pole. And that's a home run for the Lumberjacks as they now cut the lead down to two here in Nacogdoches. Cam Crawford just keeps that one fair down the 320-foot line as the Lumberjacks now have four on the board here in the bottom of the fourth. All four runs coming with two outs on the board. All after the privateer infield had an error. Could have gotten Brian Burgos out at first. Not able to make the play. That extended the Lumberjack inning, and now four Lumberjacks have come across the plate here in the bottom of the fourth. Now, Cheney Dodge trying to keep the Lumberjack bats alive. Quickly in an 0-2 count here. The 0-2 pitch. Swung on and chopped down the line. Mitchell. Have been almost spotless through the first three. The count now one and two to Cheney Dodge. As he chops that one back towards the backstop. The one-two pitch from Mitchell. High and out of the zone. Even the count here at two apiece. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs on the board. The Lumberjacks have seen this before and have since put on four runs as Dodge able to foul that one into the uh, privateer dugout. That one connects with Dodge, who will now take his spot at first base. The Lumberjacks continue to find ways to get on base here with two outs in the bottom of the fourth. The tying run now at the plate. If you're a Lumberjack fan, this is who I think you want at the plate. He has power, and even more than that, he has the power to get the ball into play here as Black has already singled once in this game. 
as he chops that one high. And that one will land foul just past the grandstands. The senior designated hitter. Swinging for the fences there. Lumberjacks have the hot bat. As Black sends that one a mile high again. That one. Going to land foul behind the privateer dugout. The count now 0-2. Mitchell with the 0-2 delivery. Swung on and hit the short left field from Skylar Black. The privateers over to make the play as the Lumberjacks put four on the board, two of them coming thanks to a Cam Crawford home run right off of the 320-foot pole. The Lumberjacks look to continue their hot streak here as we head to the top of the fifth inning. We'll be back with more Lumberjack baseball after this. Now to the plate for the Privateers here in the top of the fifth inning. Isaac Williams making his third plate appearance. We'll see the new Lumberjack pitcher. Skyler Jaco, the freshman right-hander out of Bushland, Texas. Coming in in relief for the starter, Stobart, as Williams takes his First strike of this at bat. Jaco. The third pitch strike is the count now one and two for the Lumberjack freshman. Swing and a miss strike three as Jaco gets the first out of his appearance. As actually, that's Easton Turnage on the mound. Apologize. Turnage with the first out of the inning. Got Williams swinging as Hudson Laborde now to the plate. Quickly in the hole here, 2-0. Uh, 
as Laborde, the first baseman for the Privateers. Sends that one towards the Lumberjack dugout. Two one count now for the privateer first baseman. Swing and a miss for strike two. Laborde popped out and grounded out in his first two at bats as he fouls that one back to the backstop. Staying alive here. The count now two and two. Laborde Redshirt Jr. out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Turnage with the 2 2 delivery. Gets him looking for strike three as Laborde will head back to the dugout after showing the umpire where he thinks that pitch was. Two strikeouts now for Turnage and as many batters. Jorge Tejeda now to the plate. Reached on an error and flew out to center in his first two at-bats. Chops that to third as Sean Moore able to get up and send it over to first for the out. The Lumberjacks leave the inning after a beautiful play by Sean Moore. Turnage comes into the game and sees three batters and sends three batters back to the dugout. The Lumberjacks will be up to bat here in the bottom of the fifth inning with more Lumberjack baseball after this. Jordan Monesey now in to the game for the Lumberjacks. Monesey making his third plate appearance. Walked his first at bat and struck out looking in a second. He'll see a new privateer pitcher here as Caleb Sarosky throws in a first pitch strike. Sarosky, the sophomore out of New Iberia, Louisiana. Started his college career at UL, US, LSU Eunice. Quickly ahead in the count, 0-2. Monacy fouls that one back over the Lumberjack dugout. Monesey fouls it back to the same exact spot. Yeah, 
The 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three for Montessi, who will head back to the Lumberjack dugout. Cade Clemens has struck out and grounded out in his first two plate appearances. The Lumberjack right fielder will look to reignite the Lumberjack bats here as they got hot with two outs on the board in the bottom half of the fourth inning. As that one falls out of the zone for ball one. Clemens getting his first look at Sarosky, who once again misses the zone for ball two. The 2-0 pitch finds the zone, and Clemens sends it sky high as the privateer right fielder will get underneath it. Pierce Howard not having to move too much on that one. As the Lumberjacks now with two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. They did all their damage with two outs on the board in the bottom of the fourth and see if they can keep that streak alive here. As the score is still 6-4 here in Nacogdoches, New Orleans leading. That one out of the zone for ball one. Once again, Cal Martin able to hold off on that one as he now sees two balls and no strikes on the board. Martin sends that one deep into right as that one just not quite far enough to get out of here as right fielder Pierce Howard Stands on the track and collects that for the third out of the inning. Sarosky sees three batters. And the Lumberjacks will head back out onto the defensive side of the field here as Turnage will come out to pitch for the Lumberjacks. We'll be back with more SFA baseball after this. Easton Turnage now back on the mound for the Lumberjacks. Turnage saw the minim, minimum in the top of the fifth. Now sees Blake Way here in the top of the sixth. As that one out of the zone for ball one. Turnage struck out two of the three batters he saw in the fifth inning. Finds the zone there for strike one. The 1-1 one, one pitch out of the zone. Way has struck out both times he's been at the plate this afternoon. Chops that towards short as Burgos, not able to glove it, was already looking towards first to make the play by the time the ball got to his glove. and Way reaches on a single.
Casting Ferdinand out of the plate for the Privateers. New Orleans has a runner on first, and Way, who just reached on a single. Fur has singled twice so far this game and is hit by the first pitch he sees as there's two runners on the base path for the Privateers and no outs on the board. Gage Howard under the plate. Doubled, flown out, and hit a sack fly in his first three at bats. As that one. And at the hands, Turnage comes home to cover the home plate as Menares goes to the backstop to collect. Both privateer. Runners will advance another 90 feet. Blake Way and Kasten Fur standing on second and third. The Lumberjacks have an arm warming up. As Gage Howard sees a strike from Easton Turnage. Count now one and one. That one fouled off. Turnage. Going to have to battle back here in the top of the sixth inning. As there's two runners in scoring position for the Privateers and no outs on the board. They'll have to do it the hard way, but Lumberjack Faith will believe in them. The one two pitch from Turnage. That one just misses low for ball two. Home plate umpire calls time as Gage Howard will reset. As will Easton Turnage on the mound. That one chopped towards second. This will bring home a run. Cheney Dodge able to collect that and send it over to first for the first out. Now before Blake Way makes it home, the Privateers extend their lead back to three here. Pierce Howard now to the plate for the Privateers. Since that one high towards left center, as Cam Crawford will collect and send it in, the Privateers will get another across the plate with that sack fly from Pierce Howard, as no Salo Isa coming to the plate. Salo Isa has walked two of his three plate appearances so far. Come around to score in his first one and made two defensive Jim esque plays as he watches ball one from Easton Turnage. That one in the dirt for ball two. Turnage. Looking to turn around this 2-0 count here. That one finds his own for strike one. Yeah. 
The 2 1 delivery. That one low again, that time missing the zone. The count now 3 and 1 for Silo Isa. The defensive specialist for the Privateers. He sends that one foul down the left field line towards the Lumberjack dugout. The count now full. Three balls, two strikes, and two outs on the board. The Lumberjacks have given up two in this inning. would like to end it here with the privateer second baseman, and that one out of the zone for ball four. Eyes will take his base as KC Simonich will come up to the plate. Simonich has flown out, struck out, and doubled in his three at-bats so far this evening. Take his first look at Easton Turnage as Isa is on the move and is tagged out as Menares is throwing out his second runner of the afternoon. Brian Burgos with a good follow-up tag on that. The Lumberjacks. Let two across the plate as the Islanders extend their lead. Eight to four here in Nacogdoches. We'll be back with more SFA baseball after this. Now the play for the Lumberjacks. Brian Burgos, half of the stellar defensive play to end the last half inning. Burgos has doubled and reached on error in his last two plate appearances. He was able to collect the throw from Menares to catch the last runner stealing. goes. Takes first pitch ball. As he swings early on that one and chops it back to the Lumberjack dugout. Caleb Sarosky back on the mound for the Privateers for his second inning of action. pitch from Sarosky. That one curls into the zone for strike two. Burgos watches that one out of the zone for ball two. The 2-2 pitch. Swung on a miss for strike three as Burgos will make his way back to the Lumberjack dugout. The Lumberjacks. Now waiting on Adrian Menares to come to the plate, who was the other half of that stellar defensive play to end the top of the sixth.
Menares has singled and doubled in his first two plate appearances. Just needs a triple on a home run here to bat for the cycle as he'll take strike one. I say he just needs a triple on a home run. Those are probably the two hardest ones to get here. <laughs> Nevertheless, Lumberjacks hope that Menard's bat stays hot. The count now one and one to the Lumberjack catcher. That one shot back towards the Lumberjack dugout for the second strike of the at bat. The privateers called that timeout as the coach in the dugout telling the umpire not to give it to him, and the umpire at home plate ended up giving it to him. The one-two pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. As Menares has some words for the pitcher. Getting a little chippy here in the end of this one as both dugouts going back and forth at each other. And that one just foul of the third base. The Privateers, I think, showing the Lumberjacks their last swing and a miss. Private Lumberjacks have some words back for them. Umpire trying to control the game here. Sean Moore to the plate. Moore gets a hold of that one, sends it sky high as Solo Isa will get underneath it for the third out. The Privateers see three batters, and that's it for the sixth inning. We'll be back with more Lone Jack baseball in the seventh after this. KC Simonich back to the plate here for the Privateers. Simonich was at the plate in the top of the sixth. Simonich will see the new Lumberjack pitcher, Cully Mangus. Simonich's teammate, Salo Iza, was thrown out at second to end the top of the sixth inning as Mangus' first pitch is ball. That one sent right back up the middle. 
as Cheney Dodge not able to collect, and Simonich will find himself on first base here in the top of the seventh. Isaac Williams to the plate now. Williams, the center fielder for the Privateers, has walked, hit a single, and struck out in his first three plate appearances. Mangus sends in a first pitch strike. Mangus checking on Simovich over at first, but sends that one down the pipe for strike two. Mangus shaking off the first two signs that it shown to him by catcher Menares as that one low at the feet of Williams for ball one. The one-two pitch. Swung on and hit high. Going to land foul as it will go over the Lumberjack dugout. Williams stays alive in the at-bat. As he'll get an opportunity to see another Cully Mangus pitch here in just a second. The one-two pitch. Chopped foul again by Williams. That one looked to be well out of the zone, but Williams chops it back anyways. Mangus with another one-two delivery. That one chopped foul again. Feels like the count has been 1-2 for a while now. As we'll see if Mangus can close the door on this one. The 1-2 pitch. Swung on and hit towards third. Goes under the glove of Sean Moore. As the Privateers now have a runner on first and second with no outs on the board. Mangus with quality pitches. But Williams able to foul off all the ones he wasn't able to quite get a hold of. Finally saw the pitch he wanted and singled down the third baseline. The Privateers back in business here in the top of the seventh. Hudson on the board to the plate now. There's Popped out, grounded out, and struck out in his first three plate appearances. Shows bunt. Pulls back for ball one. Laborde shows bunt again. And since that down the third baseline, Sean Moore... Sends it over to first to get the out. Both privateer base runners advance. As now, Casey Simonich stands on third and Isaac Williams standing on second base. Jorge Tejeda to the plate. Has two teammates in scoring position. Cully Mangus. We're going to prevent any of those coming across the plate as Tejeda takes ball one. Mangus from the 1-0 delivery. Swing and a miss for strike one. The 
You count now one and one. As Mangus sends that one inside for ball two. The catcher, Tejeda. I'd like to send this one at least to the outfield. If we can find grass, even better, but he'd like to at least bring one of his teammates home as he swings at that one. Can't connect for strike two. Mangus with the 2 2. Shot back towards the Lumberjack dugout. The 2 2 again. That one. In at Tejeda. Comes off the top of his hand. We'll take the base, and the base is, has now full for the privateers. Blake waiting out of the plate, singled his last at bat. Later came around and scored. Struck out twice before that. That is an opportunity to extend the privateer's lead here as there's two runners in scoring position and a third at first base. Way can just send this one to the outfield and it'll at least bring one across. He's able to find the gap. The privateers have speed all across the base paths. You can see two or three come across on plate. Mangus. Adding the count one oh oh one here. Uh, is that one's chop foul? Way quickly in the hole oh two. The 0-2 pitch from Mangus. Swung on and caught by Menares for the second out of the inning. Number 18, Cast him first out of the plate for the Privateers. Fur has singled, walked, singled again, and was hit by a pitch. In his four plate appearances this afternoon, he's yet to be... Taken out at home plate here by the Lumberjacks with three runners aboard. The Lumberjacks either want this one in the air or in the catcher's glove as he takes strike one. Mangus doing a good job of battling back here. As that one. And at Fur, the batter does have to make an off. The count now one and one to Fur. That one. And at Fur's shoulder and comes back over the plate for a strike. The count now one and two to the privateer shortstop. Mangus has an opportunity to get out of this inning without giving up any runs. He just needs one more strike here. A good battle by the Lumberjack pitcher. As that one popped towards second. Can Dodge get over and make the play in time? He can. The Lumberjacks leave three on the base paths. As Coley Mangus got himself out of the jam. The Lumberjacks look to add runs 
here on the scoreboard in the bottom of the seventh. We'll be back after the seventh inning stretch here in Nacogdoches. We have a substitution at the plate for the Lumberjacks. Number six, Clayton Larange coming to the plate. The sophomore out of Sherwood Park, Alberta, Canada. Swings the first pitch he sees and sends it into short right center field, and that one will land for... Lumberjack. As the Lumberjacks make a second substitution, Will Cerny out of Sealy, Texas. Making his Played appearance for Cheney Dodge. Looks like there'll be another substitution after this. So Coach Johnny Cardina is shaking up the lineup here in the seventh inning. Will Cerny taking strike two. That one hits Cerny as the Lumberjacks now have two on the base paths here early in the seventh. Jake Sorello now to the plate. We also have a pinch runner coming in for Cerny. Jake Evangelista coming into the game for the Lumberjacks as a pinch runner on first base. As Coach Johnny Cardenas substituting the first three batters in his order, paying off here in the bottom of the seventh as the first two are on base and a power bat at the plate with Jake Zarello. Cerello swings under that one for strike one. Zarello 
Usually starts the DH spot if Scholar Black is catching. Now getting his opportunity to come into the game here. As that one's out of the zone for ball one. The Lumberjacks with a runner in scoring position and the tying plate on deck. As Caleb Sarosky on the mound again for the Privateers for his third inning of work. As that one finds the zone for strike two. The one-two pitch. Called time by Sorello as Sorosky was taking his time on the mound. Sorello wanted to reset himself. That one chopped towards first as the privateers decide to just go to the first base bag and get the out. As first baseman Laborde thought about turning and sitting to second before it came back to first. Instead, he gets the out at first base. And now Jordan Monesey coming to the plate with two runners in scoring position. Monesey. Waiting the first pitch from Sarosky. As that one's out of the zone for ball one. Lumberjack first baseman has been walked and struck out twice in his first three at-bats. As that one's out of the zone again for ball two. The 2-0 pitch. That one finds the inside corner for strike one. The 2-1 pitch. Shot back to the Lumberjack dugout by the first baseman. The count now 2-2. Two and two. Laurent J stands on third. And Evangelista stands on second. The 2 2 pitch. Fouled off into the glove of Tejeda for the second out of the inning. The Lumberjacks. We'll make another substitution at the plate here as Drew Durst, the freshman out of Frisco, Texas, coming in. Durst making his first plate appearance of the evening. Two outs on the board and two runners at second and third. Durst would like to find the grass out in the outfield. Bring those two runs home and keep the Lumberjacks ending alive here as he takes strike one. Coach Cardenas has now mixed up four of the first five batters in his lineup. As that one's entered the hands of Durst for ball one. Sarosky misses the zone for ball two. Lumberjack base runners eagerly awaiting their opportunity to come home here. Durst 
Hoping to see the pitch he wants and put this ball in play. That one's on the inside of the zone, four strike two. The count now two apiece, two balls, two strikes, and two outs. That one chopped foul towards the New Orleans dugout. Darius gets a hold of that one, sends it sky high towards right field. That one caught in the sun. But the privateer is able to get underneath it and make the play. Right fielder Pierce Howard ends the inning for the Lumberjacks, who leave two on base. The score here, 8-4, New Orleans leading as we go into the top of the eighth inning. We'll be back with more Lumberjack baseball after this. As we get ready for the top of the eighth inning here, the Lumberjacks have made a few subs as first off on the mound, we have Clay Kennedy, the right-handed freshman out of Frankston, Texas, making his appearance for this afternoon. We have in center field, uh, the normal starter Kyle Cullen looks to have taken his spot out there. We have... Will Cerny taking the spot for Cheney Dodge at second. And out in right field is Clayton Laranger. Kennedy. We'll see Gage Howard here. As Howard quickly down in the count, 0-2. Kennedy working quickly on the mound. That one fouled back towards the stands. Gage Howard staying alive in this at-bat. 
We'll see his second 0-2 pitch here from Kennedy. Is that one in the dirt? And bounces away from Menares. Sean Moore playing shallow at third. The rest of the infield playing back on the back of the dirt. Is that one high for ball two? The count now two apiece here for Howard. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on and hit towards center as new substitute Kyle Cullen able to collect and will send it in. The Privateers now with another leadoff base runner here in the top of the eighth. This is the third inning in the row now that the Privateers have a leadoff hit. Kennedy finds his own for strike one. That one in the dirt, but Menares does a good job of keeping it in front of him. Kennedy ready for the 1 1 delivery. That one just misses the zone. As Pierce Howard. Now looking at a 2-1 count. That one swung on and hit well and high towards short center field. Kyle Cullen coming up to make the play. Send it in to keep the runner at first base as Lumberjacks record their first out of the seventh, eighth inning. Salo Aiza now coming to the plate for the Privateers. Aiza has walked three of his four plate appearances. Kennedy sends it over to first base to check on the privateer base runner. Just making sure Gage Howard stays close to the first base bag. Kennedy finds his own for strike one. The L1 pitch. Missed the zone as the count now one apiece. One ball, one strike, and one out. Kennedy taking his time on the mound. As that one finds the ground in Menares. Not able to get it throw in time as Gage Howard able to steal second. Salo Isa. At the plate, the Lumberjacks do have an arm warming up in their bullpen. The 
2-1 pitch to Isa as Kennedy checks on the runner at second. Finds the zone for strike two. The count now, two balls and two strikes for the privateer second baseman. He's made a couple great defensive plays here this afternoon. He's come around once to score for the privateers. As that one swung on and fouled over to the Little League field. The count stays at two apiece. Isa sends that one towards right center field. As Laurange is able to collect and will send it in. Gage Howard able to make it to third. As the Privateers now have two outs on the board and a runner on third base for KC Simich. KC Simich. Has doubled and singled in two of his four plate appearances. Struck out and flew out in the other two. That one in for a first pitch strike. That one in the dirt for ball one. Kennedy with the 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on and hit high by Simonich. That one's going to stay in the infield. Burgos calls it off. And that will end the inning for the Lumberjacks as the Privateers strand one on third and bring none across the plate as the score is still 8-4 here in Nacogdoches. New Orleans takes the lead into the bottom half of the eighth inning. We'll be back with more Lumberjack baseball after this. Cal Martin out of the plate for the Lumberjacks here in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Lumberjacks down four here late. We'll need to get the bats active here and get runners on base. Martin sees the first pitch strike from Caleb Soroski. Sur That one chopped back for the second strike of the at-bat. Sarosky with the 0-2 pitch. That one well off the plate for ball one.
That one in the dirt again for the second ball. The count now 2-2 for the Lumberjack left fielder. That one in the dirt. The count now three and two. Good job by Cal Martin to be patient and work back in the count. Started this about with two straight strikes. Has lined out, grounded out, and flown out in his first three at bats. As he sends that one towards center field, that one back towards the wall. Williams makes a play as he runs towards the track. Martin with a good swing, just not able to find. Grass, the first out for the Lumberjacks in this half inning. Brian Burgos now to the plate for the Lumberjacks. Has been solid on defense all afternoon. As he takes first pitch strike. Burgos has singled, reached on air, and struck out in his first three plate appearances. Burgos's ability to get on base and beat the throw in the fifth inning, fourth inning rather, sparked the Lumberjacks four spot. Still down four here. Burgos would like to get on base again as he chops that towards third. That one off the tip of the glove by the, the privateer third baseman. Blake, Blake Way not able to get a hold of that. I think the scoreboard here scored that an error. I think I would score that a hit as I'm not sure that Way would have gotten the throw off in time anyways. Burgos was moving down the line. Menjarez takes strike one. As Soroski checks on Burgos over at first base. Menares chops that down the third baseline, and that one rural foul. Menares is single, doubled, and struck out in his three plate appearances. The privateers have an arm warming up in the bullpen. It looks like Colin Cullivan, the junior out of New Orleans, as that one's well off the plate by Sarosky. The count now, one ball, one strike, and one out for the Lumberjack catcher. That one in the dirt for ball two. The count now, two apiece. That one swung on and hit well towards third. This time, way able to get a glove to it, and the Privateers able to turn a double play to end the inning. The Lumberjacks not able to put any points on the board as New Orleans still leads this one 8-4, heading into the top of the ninth. We'll be back with more Lumberjack baseball after this.
Isaac Williams now to the plate for the Privateers here in the ninth inning. The Privateers come into the inning with a four-run lead. Williams has walked and singled twice in three of his four bats as he sends that one high and out of bounds for a foul. Isaac Cameron scored in the first inning. Private to your center fielder. Look to uh, try to add to their lead here as he chops that one off of his ankle. The count now quickly 0-2 here as the Lumberjacks bring in Joe Lopez, the freshman right-handed pitcher out of Spring, Texas. Lopez ahead 0-2 here. Shakes off the first sign he sees from Menares and will send in the second. Is that one swung and hit well towards the center? Kyle Cullen comes in to make the play, and he does. <laughs> Cullen did not start this game for the Lumberjacks. And came in as a substitution in the eighth inning. His veteran presence is felt out there in center field. Hudson Labort coming to the plate now. First baseman for the Privateers. Swing and misses at that one. As that gets through the catcher and the umpire. Labord has popped out, grounded out, struck out, and bunted into an out in his first four plate appearances. As that one's hit sharply down the third base line. Sean Moore doesn't have a play at it. As the Privateers now have a runner on first with one out. Coming into the inning, the Privateers had three straight innings where their leadoff hitter had singled or reached base. The... Lumberjacks able to get the first out here as Lopez now seeing his third batter. Jorge Tejeda coming to the plate, the catcher for the Privateers. Was hit by a pitch his last at bat. As that one finds his own for strike one. Lopez checks on the runner first. That one finds his own for the second strike. The count quickly 0-2 here for Jorge Tejeda. The 0-2 pitch. That one looks just high from the zone. First ball of the at-bat. One ball, two strikes here for Lopez. Checking on the runner first. To hit it down on the count, 1-2. As that's called strike three, as Tejeda does nothing but watch that one. Blake Wade now coming to the plate with two outs on the board, a runner at first here for the privateer third baseman. Way has struck out three times and singled once in his four at bats. See if he can help move his teammate around the bases here. As the Privateers hope this is their last opportunity in the batter's box. Lopez. 
with the 0-1 delivery. That one finds the zone for strike two. Lopez is only throwing one ball so far. Way looking not to strike out here for his fourth time. As that one's in the dirt for ball one. Way one strike out away from a golden sombrero. Not what you want to be remembered for, but as long as there's a W in the win column, I'd take it any day. Is there it is, the golden sombrero from Joe Lopez. The Lumberjacks, C3, C4 batters, rather, and no privateers come across the plate as the Lumberjacks need at least four here to keep the game alive in the bottom of the ninth. We'll be back with more Lumberjack baseball after this. Now to the bottom of the ninth inning here. The Lumberjacks have three outs to get at least four runs. Third baseman Sean Moore coming to the plate. Moore has grunted out and singled in two of his three plate appearances so far this evening. Moore will face a new pitcher as... Colin Cullivan comes into the game for the Privateers, and the first pitch we see from Cullivan is a strike. Moore, one of the senior leaders on this team. Swings and sends that down the third baseline. The count now 0-2. The 0-2 pitch from Cullivan. That one low and out of the zone for ball one. The Lumberjacks built a new pitching and batting facility here at J.C.'s Field over the last year. The Lumberjacks also trying to implement more technology into their practices and their games. Trying to use data and analytics to Increase their players' knowledge at the plate and on the mound.
Cullivan with the 2-2 delivery. That one sent down the line. Sean Moore staying alive here. In the bottom of the ninth, Lumberjacks would like to see him take up a spot on first base. The count still 2-2 for the Lumberjacks senior. That one fell out off to the Little League field. The 2-2 pitch. Just high for ball three. The count now full for the Lumberjack third baseman. Good job by Sean Moore here to battle back in this at bat. Selling off the pitches that aren't necessarily hittable, but definitely would land as a strike. As that one's in at the hands for ball four, the Lumberjacks have a runner on first with no outs here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Clayton Laranger coming to the plate for the Lumberjacks. Lauren J. Was a substitution for Cam Crawford. Crawford had hit a home run in his last at bat, and Lauren J came to the plate. I was a little confused as to why the substitution was made, but he ended up coming in and singling and keeping the bats alive here as the privateers look to turn two as they do and get Lauren J out at first. The Lumberjacks now quickly with two outs on the board. As now they only have one out to play with here as. Number 17, Jacob Evangelista comes to the plate. Evangelista hitting for Will Cerny, who hit for Cheney Dodge. As that one out of the zone and out of the mitt for ball one. Colin Cullivan looking to end this one here as that one finds his own for strike one. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on and hit towards second. Evangelista is going to have to get there as the play is made and the game is over. The Privateers take game three. The score here, 8-4. We'll be back for the fourth game of the weekend tomorrow at 1 p.m. here at J.C.'s Field. For now, I'm Carl Berry, and we'll be back with more Lumberjack Baseball tomorrow.